I'm Martin Marty, Marty Marty, and I'm 83 and a half. I think that one of the things you should learn in your mid-80s is uh, that a lot of things diminish. Your eyes won't be as good, your muscles won't be as good, your memory won't be <laughs> as good, you fish for names now and then, but that it seems to me to be simply something that is part of the rhythm of life to be embraced as opposed to be defied. My father was a teacher in a Lutheran school and a church organist, gave me my love for Bach, and I dedicated my first book to him, and I think it said, to my first and best teacher. Our mother didn't have college education or anything, but was well read. Before we were in high school, we had been reading Shakespeare. I have a brother who's a fellow historian and a sister who was a teacher and an organist. Um, we're still very close to each other. My first wife and I had four sons in six years. And then we were approached to help place children in foster care. Failing to do that on time, my wife and I said, uh, I'll give up my study in the house. Uh, after 29 years of marriage, my wife died. And um, later on, I married the widow of my college roommate. He died six weeks after the birth of their daughter. My boys had known her a little bit. Widow Aunt Harriet, they called her. So that family blended very easily. The other thing is we took in foster children. Harriet quit as a high school teacher and that made almost her vocation. I did all my writing at home. So you have, the rule was if, uh, if they wanted to come to daddy's study, the door was always open and I had to quit what I was doing. So I sort of wrote in a kind of a hiccup fashion. From 1956 until this year, I, I never didn't have a book contract underway. I'm writing a great deal. Every envelope over in this room has something I'm doing. I don't think that many of the most important things that we do in our life are done by lightning bolt. A few times it'll happen. And more often it's you kind of grow into it. So when people ask me, for example, how did you get your call to ministry? I always say, and I think my students would agree, that you get your call to ministry or anything else through billions of particulars. Add it all up, I have about 10 years in the parish ministry. Any good pastor is right there up to the last minute and a minute after. After my wife had died, I had written a book called A Cry of Absence. And I deal with the fact that Jesus is abandoned on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in the book I had argued that's the last time anybody had to be abandoned. I think that's something we can all learn. That's when you think through the basics and uh, if anything, faith grows stronger.